Welcome in to the Business on Purpose podcast. We are here to do one thing, liberate you from the chaos of working in your business. Interesting topic for today. I am just getting out of a meeting that I was invited to by a client who uh, was for private wealth individuals. <laughs> don't worry. I don't spend a ton of time in rooms like this. This is very rare. It's not on the typical weekly schedule for me. Um, but I was very intrigued and honored to be invited because of the uh, just what it meant for you, the small business owner, because I could go learn interesting insights from a very macro perspective to try and bring down to a micro level that I gleaned to be able to kind of understand, hey, this affects small business owners, even though literally millions and billions of numbers were thrown out. So what did it all mean? outside of having to get my head around the billions idea, but essentially what they were talking about was the emerging asset class, if you will, or the emerging market of private equity. Well, there's a bunch of different types of private equity, maybe six, seven different types of private equity. Uh, For instance, a leveraged buyout where you just buy out a company, Um, or there's some other things. So here's what I want to get to with this. A lot of times, small business owners have these kind of passing mindsets of, what if I just sold my business or could I even sell my business? You know, it's a question that I think you've got to ask even if you're not interested in the response to the question and here's why. Because if you build a business that's sellable, statistically, you're going to enjoy the business more because you're spending less time working in it, putting out fires and you're spending more time working on it. And so what I learned in this meeting although they spent 90% of the meeting talking about uh, from the investor standpoint of actually investing monetary value into buying not just company, but multiple companies, a a book or a portfolio of companies. Here's what I walked away with for you and me, for the small business owners of the world, the folks that wake up on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, and we deal with production and we deal with accounting and we deal with administration and we deal with payables and taxes and all of that other kind of thing. Here's the reality of it. When a person, a group, a private equity firm, whoever, when they look to buy a company, what are they looking for? Here's what they're not typically looking for. They're not typically looking for a wild-eyed personality. They're not looking for a rock star. Typically, they're not necessarily even looking for a standout product. In fact, if you were to ask a lot of private equity firm owners, if you were to ask private equity uh, fund managers, hey, I've got this rock star product or I've got this rock star personality, I would venture to say that most of them are going to feel like, yeah, I don't know, I'll entertain it, but I'll tell you right now, I'm not entirely interested. Why? It's because rock stars die. (laughs) And I hate to be so morbid, but it's true. Rock stars die. They have a terminal life expectancy. And at the same time, products die. Many products have a terminal life expectancy. But you know what never dies? Process. If you were to walk fund manager by fund manager or uh, investor by investor and ask them, what's the most important thing for you? You know what a lot of them would really say? Vision, mission, values, systems, and processes. Can this business outlast the business owner? Is this a business we can take and transition and begin to run from a distance? Because it's not so dependent on one person or a couple of people to be able to do it. In fact, it was interesting. They were talking about key man clauses. What's a key man clause? Well, they also have key man insurance. It is literally a clause in a contract or insurance that is provided on the, quote, key man of the business. So let's say you own a company, but you've got a, quote, key man. It could be a woman, a man, it doesn't matter who it is. But you've got a key man in the organization. You can actually take out insurance on that key man from what they were talking about at the same time. You can also build operating agreement clauses around the key man. So if the key man is gone, then you can pull certain triggers, certain levels, levers to get that done. So what does all that mean? All that means is if you don't have a key man, but instead have a rock solid process, the operating agreement is a whole lot more transferable. 
That's right. It's transferable. And so the idea is, in fact, many business brokers need this done, is that when somebody comes to them, hey, big business broker, I'd like, I'd like to sell my business. If I'm the business broker, I'm less interested in who you are as a personality. I'm less interested in the uniqueness or longevity of your product because most products are commodities. And what I'm more interested in, what I'm very interested in, is your process. And you know what's great about process, guys? If you own a business that does $742 million of annual revenue, or if you own a business that does $742,000 of annual revenue, or $200,000 of annual revenue, if you own a business that crosses the spectrum, you know what happens with process? Nothing. It's the same. It's the same in every respect, at every level, within every business of every size. If you build process, you will grow and it's more transferable, it's more sellable. If you don't build process, it's not as sellable. Process is what makes your business sellable. So there you go, if you've ever wondered, is my business sellable? Now you have a starting point, you have something to look at, something to go off of to say, hey, if I'm ever gonna sell my business, I've got to be able to build my process. If you need clarity and need a place to start and are willing to put in the, the sweat equity to get it started, go to mybusinessonpurpose.com forward slash vision. Totally free, as long as you're willing to put in the work. It's right there on us. Thanks for joining me. See you next time on the Business on Purpose podcast.